Please use the raised hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. If you're called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. We will start out with David Collinger with Post and Courier. David, you can unmute yourself. How's it going, Z? It's David from the Post and Courier back home. Uh, see you kind of showing off the trophy there. Uh, a lot of people thought that this was kind of ingrained because you guys were supposed to get here last year, but how hard was this season? How difficult was it to get to this point and then win this game to get to the Final Four? Uh, it's been very difficult. Um, we've been hit with a lot of different stuff. You know, we lost four games this season, and um, a lot of teams might not be able to um, come back for stuff like that. We were able to stick together as a team, and um, we were able to come back, and now we're on our way to the Final Four. All right, we'll next go to Joe Gorchow with WAS-TV. Joe, you can unmute yourself. Hi, Zaya, Joe Gorcho, WIS-TV in Columbia, South Carolina. Congratulations. Just yesterday, you were talking about how you dreamt of playing in a game like this. Now you're holding the trophy, headed to the Final Four. What does this moment mean to you? It's very surreal for me. Um, I was out there, and I was just staring, like, wow, I'm really here. Like, we're really going to the Final Four. But um, I feel like our work isn't done yet. Um, I don't want to get my hopes up too high because we, we still have two more games to go. But um, I'm ready for it. All right, we'll next go to Matt Dow. Matt, you can unmute yourself. Hey, Zaya, Matt Dow will watch Fox in Columbia. Zaya, you guys held Texas to zero points in the fourth quarter. That's the first scoreless quarter in NCAA women's tournament history since the quarters have started. You talked about not being done yet. Is the defense going to be what makes the difference between what winning a national championship? Definitely. I think I think defense is what wins wins games. Um, of course, you have to have the offensive part. But uh, if you're not a well put, to good, put together defensive team, uh, it's going to be tough. Um, uh, Texas was definitely a good defensive team as well. But uh, we just came out with the victory. We'll next go to Greg Hadley with the state newspaper. Greg, you can unmute yourself. <laughs> Hey, Zaya, uh, just kind of going off of that, I remember you saying very early in the season that when you put it all together, it would be scary. Have you guys put it all together yet? No. And that's why it's even scarier, because it's not there yet. We're getting closer and closer to the goal that we want to get to, and we're, the pieces are falling into place. So it's coming, though. we like, almost there. It's like this much. <laughs> One next go to Elise Robinson. Elise, you can unmute yourself. Hi, Zaya. This is Elise Robinson from Sports and Culture Sports Media. Uh, firstly, congratulations on the win. Thank and you. also congratulations on becoming the most outstanding player. Um, Just a statement. Uh, towards the end of the third quarter, what was going through your mind after that reverse layup that you had um, going off that run to end the quarter? Well, first I thought it was a foul, but, you know, we moved past that. Um, but I will say, like, uh, towards the third and the fourth quarter, it was hard for me to not get too excited because I'm like, wow, look at the score. Like, we're winning. So I had to keep myself calm and stay composed out there. But um, I was very excited seeing the clock run out, knowing that we'll be headed to the Final Four. All right. We'll next go to Keith Alsa. Keith, you can unmute yourself. Hey, Zion. Congratulations on the win and on being named most outstanding player. So, can you just talk about the resilience of this team and all the things uh, that you've gone through this season, going through ups and downs, uh, you know, having some, you know, not so good games on a big stage, but now to come in the NCAA tournament and lead your team to the Final Four. And you were cooking with grease out there tonight. I mean, you kind of got to showcase your ability in the open floor. Just how good does it feel after everything you've been through, all the ups and downs this season? Uh, I just want to say it starts with Coach. Um, she's resilient. So we're, we're a reflection of her. Uh, the way she teaches us out there is the way we play out there on the court. Um, and uh, we don't back down from anyone. You know, we've been through a lot. But uh, you, you fall, but we get right back up. So that's just our main goal. Anytime that we're down, anytime we're doubted, we got to uh, keep the foot on the gas. All right, we'll next go to Nancy Armour with uh, USA Today Sports. Hey, Zaya, congratulations. And I apologize if you've already been asked this. I just came over from the other Zoom. Um, this is going to be the first time that there are going to be two black women head coaches in the final four. What does that mean, and what kind of a message does that send, especially after the year that this country has had? 
Now that's history being made. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, just the way that the women are um, being inspirations to everyone in the world is a beautiful thing. Um, I think that a lot of people has also been watching women's basketball more. So it just shows that uh, we are on the radar now, and women are standing up and doing the same things that men can do. All right, we'll next go to Cam Gaskins. Cam, you can unmute yourself. Hey, Zaya, this is Cam Gaskins with ABC Columbia. You mentioned those four losses you guys had earlier in the season. I was just curious. Those were against some pretty high-caliber teams. What did y'all learn about yourselves in those losses that's prepared you now for this tournament run? We got to play as a team. Um, we've had some spurts where we weren't playing as a team. Everyone wasn't getting involved, and the flow wasn't there. So that's the main thing we're working on now, making sure the flow is there. Everyone's touching the ball, uh, running it through Aaliyah. Uh, she's a very key factor, this, factor to this team, rebounding and just doing everything we need to do to win. All right, we'll go to David Conger. David, you can unmute yourself. Hey, Z, it's Dave again. A uh, real off topic here, but there's been some legislation introduced that will be voted on soon about athletes being able to monetize their image. And being as how you have a lot of social media presence, it could be in the future, you could monetize that and, and make money off your social media posts. What do you think about that? Mm, I'm not really too worried about that right now. Uh, that's good to know, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of focused on the main goal right now, so I really don't have any thoughts on that. All right, we'll next go to Mitch Brown. Mitch, you can unmute yourself. Zai, obviously job's not finished, but embracing the moment, that's something you guys have been able to do uh, each round of this tournament. You waited 383 days to get to this point. Uh, what does it mean seeing you guys throwing up the confetti, um, just enjoying the moment and the accomplishment? Yeah, it feels great. Uh, I keep saying that, like, I'm, it's still a surreal feeling for me. It takes me a while to process things. So when I get back to the room, I might shed a tear or something because, like, it's very, it's a dream for me. And I think it's a dream for any young girl. Uh, I've been working hard my whole life. My teammates, we've been working hard our whole lives. And like Coach said, she feel like we deserve it, and we think we deserve it as well. So we're just going to go out there and play our hardest. All right, we'll next go to Josh Kendall. Josh, you're going to meet yourself. As I, Josh Kendall with The Athletic, can you talk a little bit about the process that this team has to go through each year? It's bringing in players like yourself who are highly regarded high school players and putting that all into one team where everybody has to take a little away from maybe what they are individually to make it all work as a group and how that got you to this point. Uh, it's always an adjustment at first, but uh, Coach was saying the other day, like, all of us could have went to a different school, had 30, 30 attempts a game. But for us all to want to come together uh, and play as a team together, it's unstoppable. When you can have a, a group full of all-stars come together and play together, uh, and like I feel, I feel like it's showing, us, showing for us right now the way that we're playing as a team. All right, and our final question, we'll go to Greg Hadley with the state newspaper. Hey, Zaya, a lot was made about Texas's defensive <laughs> performance against Maryland. Uh, and how they were able to kind of shut them down going into this game. Did you guys kind of take that as a challenge to show off what your defense could do? I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you said. I didn't, I didn't get the question. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, just going into this game, it seemed like Texas, you know, had gotten a lot of headlines for what it did against Maryland defensively. Did you guys take that as a challenge to show what you guys could do? Because you're, you know, as a very defensive team too. Uh, we just played with our guard up. Uh, we knew that Texas was a good defensive team. Um, can't take any team lightly. You know, Maryland was supposed to win that game, but they didn't. And it, the same for this game. Uh, we were supposed to win, but it could have went the other way. So we just made sure we put, put our foot on the gas, kept our guard up, and did what we needed to do. We are joined by head coach Don Daly. Please use the raise hand function to get you a to ask a question. When you're called upon your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Uh, we'll start out with um, Keith Alsep. Keith, you can unmute yourself and ask. Coach Daly, congratulations on uh, winning the region and going to making it back to the final four. Can you just talk about the journey for this team and in particular for to see players put it all together like Zia Cook who's had her ups and downs to be the regional most outstanding player 
and then Leticia Ami here with her knee injuries to just have a tremendous regional as well and make the all-region team. I mean, how does that make you feel as a coach? Because I know you've said in the past you're a dream merchant. Uh, to see these young players' dreams coming true on the big stage with still so much more out there. Um, I mean, young people are incredibly resilient. Um, we, we happen to, you know, look up on some great ones and all the, the players that you mentioned. Um, they, they don't come, you know, fully wrapped, you know, properly. Um, that is what college is for. That is what, you know, college is a training ground for them understanding what they need to do to be successful. And, and sometimes that, Sometimes being successful, you got to go through some things. You got to go through th some things personally, individually. Um, sometimes that's packed, you know, with, with an injury or, or two. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really super proud of uh, um, L.A. for how she just stayed the course. Um, she never got rattled. She just stayed the course. Zaya, you know, you know, I, I, I saw some of the social media posts that people were talking about Zaya. Um, and, you know, some of the shots she, you know, she she took throughout the season. Um, you, you can't shut a player down like, like Zaya, like as a coach. You can't just say, don't shoot the ball, don't. You have to teach her along the way, you know, how to, how to, how to um, be more deliberate, um, how to trim the, the fat off of her game. Um, so she's in a position to do what she did for us on the biggest stage. Um, but every single one of our players have gone through something, um, you know, and, and our coaches. And I, they, they probably don't want me to say this, but I'm going to say it, but we're not going to, you know, you know, we, we had an assistant coach lose her mother while, while being in this bubble. Um, we've had, you know, we, we've had a, you know, a, a player lose her uncle the other day. Um, and it would have been very easy for them to just say, you know, families first, I gotta go home, I gotta leave this bubble. Um, but the, the sacrifice of resiliency, um, you got another one that's going through cancer treatments. So, I mean, but they all are able to just put things to, a side, to the side, um, focus on the task at hand and then pick it up um, when we're done what we're doing. Um, so that's the commitment that, that young people have, and people really don't know that they're going through those things, but they handle them with so much class. Um, and I, I am just incredibly proud of them. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm part of their village um, because they are, you know, some of the, aside from being great basketball players, they are super great people. I mean, they don't give us any issues. Um, if they do give us issues, we, we talk it out, you know, we don't hold, hold grudges. We just handle it and we move on. And they are incredibly strong for being able to, to handle all of that and then and to perform the way they, they need to perform. I, I do think we are um, mentally tough. And I, I question that, you know, from time to time. Um, but when they're able to tangibly do what they did today, um, they made huge strides. And, and that's all we were trying to do throughout the season is get them to a point where uh, we can compete for a national championship. And then all the other stuff, those are great lessons that we can, you know, fall, you know, look back on and say, hey, you know, another teammate's going through that. You know, we did this and we corrected it and we moved, we moved on and, and checked off one of our, one of our goals. All right, we'll next go to Chantel Jennings with that, The Athletic. Chantel, you can unmute yourself. Hey, Don, this is Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. When you took over at South Carolina, they hadn't been to the NCAA tournament in five years. You're now taking this team to its third Final Four in the last six postseasons. I'm just curious, when you got to Columbia, like, did you have a timeline for establishing this level of success and this expectation, or is that something you just can't even sort of have a concrete timeline or, or even a general timeline for? Well, when I came to South Carolina, um, um, I was used to just winning, <laughs> to be quite honest. And then when, when I came here, I thought we would just do the same thing. Work hard, you know, you... you you know, the future fruits of your labor will 
uh, produce success. And it was the, the opposite, the other end of the spectrum where um, I, I don't know if I was patient enough. Um, obviously, I thought we could get it turned around in, you know, at least three years. And, then, you know, our AD, Eric Hyman, was like, it's going, you know. I, actually, I, it, it was more like he said three to four years. And I was like, you know, looking at him like, you, you must not know me. Um, you, just might, you must not know who you hired. Um, but he knew more than I did in, in what was here at South Carolina, the type of players that were here. Um, and I know they would think differently, and I know they think differently now that they've seen how this program has grown. They, they weren't, you know, they didn't want to be pros. They wanted to be something else. They wanted to impact the world in other professions in life, and basketball was a byproduct of that. Um, but once we got the players in here that uh, the majority of our team love basketball because if you, the majority of your team is, you know, lazy people, the majority of the team is undriven, people aren't driven, unmotivated, that's who you're going to be. But if the majority of your team is the opposite, that's who you're going to be. And once we got those players in here, they were able to, you know, do it for the love of the game. Not because we were telling them to do it, but because they love the game. And once that happened, things started to turn. We, and we were fortunate to have some of the best talent in the country in the state of South Carolina. So we just tried to corner the market to make sure that we got every great kid that was in this state, talented kid that was in the state of South Carolina, to South Carolina. Um, and once we got that, then we, you know, then, you know, they said, if you, if you win, they will come. If you build it, they'll come. And, you know, our fans have done a great job at, at actually giving us what a successful basketball program should look like um, in creating a home court advantage. All right, we'll next go to Greg Hadley with the state newspaper. Greg, you gonna mute yourself? John, when you look at holding Texas to zero points in the fourth quarter, holding them to 23% on the game, I guess just is, was that the, the best defensive performance you guys have had this season, or is it close to? I mean, I, I really didn't realize that they didn't score in the fourth quarter. I, you know, I, I looked at the stat sheet late, you know, after the celebration, and I didn't realize that. It didn't feel like that. Um, I, I say we were just locked in. You know, we were a, a team that was driven to, to be where we are right now, and it's just they wanted to go to the Final Four. They want to win a national championship. And – they're going to give it up on both sides of the ball. Um, so was it – I thought it was a pretty good defensive um, performance. But I also think that um, Texas was a little tired. I mean, they gave every single thing that they had um, in that Maryland game. And I didn't – you know, I, I, I said they may have some weary legs, but, but their hearts are going to keep beating. And their hearts did keep beating. Um, it's just that, you know, we just, we just never let them off the hook. And that's the kind of approach you have to take, especially when you're playing against a, a Vic Schaefer um, team and the performance that they, that they, um, they had uh, two nights ago. Um, so, I mean, Vic's got them in a, in a great place. I, I know that every player that's on his roster and every recruit that he's recruiting saw that performance. And when they lock into a coach, you know, great things will happen. All right, we'll next go to Matt Dow. Matt, you can unmute yourself. Hey, Don, Matt Dow, Watch Fox in Columbia. We all know last year going in, you were going to be number one. COVID took so much away from everyone. And I know in the tournament, sometimes you got to move on pretty quickly from a big moment. But with all, all everyone's gone through in the past year, do you have to savor these moments a little bit more now? Or do you still have to move on pretty quickly with the final four so close? Uh, I mean, we're, we're going we're gonna to enjoy this. We're going to enjoy it um, because, again, you never know when, when things will be taken away from you. Last year, things were taken away. I, I'm glad our, our players fought to, to be in this position um, because we had two very special seniors that, you know, did a get, didn't get a chance to finish their careers out in the form of playing in the NCAA tournament. So, Ty and Kiki, this, you know, these nets are, are certainly for you and, and we appreciate the legacy that you left with our players to put them in this position, to compete at a high level, to, you know, to 
you know, to, to forge ahead, even though you guys left a, a big void in, um, on our team. So, you know, we're going to enjoy it. You know, 24-hour rule. You know, tomorrow this time, you know, we'll move on to whoever our next opponent will be. I right, we'll next go to Michelle Vopel with ESPN.com. Michelle, you can unmute your I'm sorry, Lynn, did you call on me? I'm so sorry. It is so loud in here. I can't hear anything. Uh, congratulations, Don. This is Michelle Vopel. I, I wondered if I could ask you, I know you, you talked about Adia. Um, Adia is the second um, former WNBA player to make it after you, and for the first time we'll have two black women uh, coaching in the, in the final four. What does that mean to you? I know how much you tried to mentor younger people and, and have been so grateful for others who've mentored you. What does it mean to have, have both of you been, being in the final four? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of Adia. Um, you know, I, I wanted that to happen. I was, I was cheering for her to get it done. Um, and it's not, you know, not for any other reason um, besides, you know, us being represented at the biggest stage of, of women's college basketball. Um, and that's because, you know, there are so many black um, coaches out there that don't get opportunity. Um, because when ADs don't see it, when they don't see it, and they're going to see it on the biggest stage on Friday night, um, that two black women are representing two programs uh, in the Final Four, um, something that has never been done before. You know, our history here in, in women's basketball is so filled with so many black bodies that um, for this to be happening in 2021, t to me, is uh, long overdue. Um, but we're, we're proud. We're happy. I, I know my phone is probably full of text messages of, uh, of uh, black coaches all across the country just congratulating us on, on, on doing that, on, on being, being present, being in the moment, being able to, you know, take our programs to this place. Um, but, but certainly, I, I know Adia utilizes um, all of her basketball knowledge as a player, and, you know, she's been a coach long enough that, you know, she's not just the soup. There's always going to be part player in us, and that's why, you know, our players, um, we are so relatable to them. They understand it because it's coming from a place of we've done that, um, we're, we're, we're trying to help you get to that place where, you know, you can have some longevity in our league. But um, representation matters. And it's, and it's nothing against, you know, anybody else that, that, that lost to us. Um, but when you see two black women representing in this way, um, I, I, I hope the decision makers who are, because there are a lot of jobs out there, um, that, you know, you give black women an opportunity you know, not just give them the job, you know, bring them in, um, interview them. Um, if you don't hire them, let them know why. Let them know why. So we can continue to work on and, and um, just perfecting what, 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 you know, our craft and our, our profession, because there are a lot of people out there that aren't getting the opportunities that, that um, they should, because this is exactly what can happen when you, when you give a black woman an opportunity. Don't get me wrong now. I, I don't want people to, you know, start bashing me on social media about, you know, just hire the, just hire the, just hire the uh, most qualified coach. You know, if it was that easy, if it was that easy, there would be more black um, head coaches in our, you know, in our game. So. All right. We'll next go to Howard Meggall. Howard, you can unmute yourself. Dawn, congratulations. Thank I'm you. hoping you can talk to me about what it meant to see Aaliyah have the type of game that she had against, uh, you know, and Charlie, somebody who uh, is a consensus lot. Um, this is a player at this point, uh, more specifically. I mean, I, I thought, honestly, I thought Aaliyah came in, you know, her eyes were wide open. Um, and um, I, I thought the, the moment may have gotten the best of her earlier on. It took a while for her to settle in uh, to be the, the Aaliyah that we, we need her to be at all, you know, at every, every, every game. 
Um, but Aaliyah, you know, does so many other great things for us. She didn't score the ball today, but she rebounded, she defended. Um, she was there, she was present. You gotta guard her. So you gotta, you know, you, when she's on the floor, you gotta guard her with a player and probably a half a player. Um, so she afforded us opportunities, um, afforded Zai opportunities, afforded um, Henny opportunities, and LA played tremendously well, as well as um, Victoria Saxton. So um, I'm super proud of her. She gotta continue to, to grow and meet these moments um, in every statistical category. All right, we'll go to the final question to Joe Gorchow with WIS TV. Joe, you can unmute yourself. Congratulations, Don, on the victory tonight. You mentioned in the very beginning about the resiliency of this team and what they've been going through since they even arrived in this bubble. How have you been able to get this team and this group to be so collective and united and focused on a purpose to achieve this goal here tonight? Um, I mean, this they're inside of this team. There's always been a a oneness and we didn't always play that way but deep inside of them they just want to win and throughout the year they just didn't know how to win utilizing everybody around them because they always are they always bet on themselves they always had to bet on themselves in high school um, and then coming to college um, the collective group of talent that that blessed us with coming to South Carolina um, some days you're going to have great days. Some days you're going to have to sacrifice. And through those sacrificial times is when your, your, your confidence can, can tilt the wrong way because you're not, you're not performing the way you think in your mind, the way you need to perform. Um, but, you know, once we lost to Texas A&M in the, in the regular season, this team took on a different personality. This team just gave it up. You know, they, you know, un, you know, they they peeled away all the layers and they just came together as one. And I I do think um, you know, our timing was 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 impeccable uh to bring in this this couple. I always talk about this couple, uh, Felicia and Johnny Allen. We we brought them in at the end of the regular season and then part of the postseason, and they just they brought our, our team together. You know, they, they share things that they don't share in, you know, everyday life. You know, it takes people who are, who are experts in it. You know, Felicia and Johnny are experts in life skills, experts in, in, in getting teams to work as a collective unit. And that's not just talk. It is, they put them in, in um, situations where they have to, they have to, meet each other halfway with communication and realness and genuine and, 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 and depth. Um, so once we were able to do that, you see we're, you know, we're a different team, you know, no one, you know, everybody that I talked to, they started crunching the numbers and saying, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're three and four in the last seven games. We're two and two in the last four games. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can make something look good or bad with numbers, depending on how far you want to go out. Um, but make no mistake, this team stuck together. This team came together. This team is playing some of their best basketball at the right time. And for all the people that, that doubted this moment, um, you can come on back. You know, we always got room on the, on the bandwagon for you. Um, so thanks, 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 Joe, for the for the question. And um, really, I am I'm honored to coach this basketball team, and I I truly give God the glory for allowing us to be um, in these moments. So is that it? That's it. Thank you so much for your time, Coach thank, Daly. Thank you. Congrats on advancing to the Final Four. Uh, that's it for this post game news pro conference. A recording of this press conference will be posted in the NCA Digital Media Hub at www.nca.baritone.com. Thank you for joining us.